Back in the 1950s, Ford had a very strange vision. They imagined a world in which petrol was unnecessary, a world in which cars ran on a very alternative power source, nuclear. They came up with the Ford Nucleon concept car, and it was interesting because it used a small nuclear reactor in the rear of the vehicle, just behind the passenger cabin. This reactor, they believed, would use uranium to create a process of nuclear fission. Now, Ford never actually built a full-size working version of the Nucleon, so we can only speculate as to how this made-up car would actually work. But one school of thought is that the nuclear fission process would generate heat, which would then convert water into steam, just like it does in a nuclear power station, which would then drive a turbine to create electricity. And that electricity would then drive a motor, allowing the car to move. If they'd pull this off, Ford says the Nucleon would have had a range of 5,000 miles without having to recharge. At the end of that 5,000 miles, the reactor would reach the end of its life and could be swapped out for another one. They say you could even get different types of reactor that produced different levels of power, meaning you could go for a low powered car for half a year maybe, and then upgrade to a faster one at the end of that reactor's life if that's what you wanted to do. Obviously, the idea of the Nucleon never caught on, but it did get me thinking. Technology has moved on in leaps and bounds since the 1950s, so could nuclear power contribute to our energy needs in the 21st century in the world of cars? And how? Well, the idea of moving a vehicle using a nuke isn't totally absurd. That's exactly how nuclear submarines work. The reactor creates the heat, which boils the water, which creates the steam, which drives the turbine, which then charges the batteries, which then powers the motors. But the nuclear reactors on a submarine are massive, so surely they couldn't work in a car. Well, who knows? Back in 2020, Mr. Donald Trump issued an executive order that promoted small modular nuclear reactors for use in defense and space exploration. NASA then went ahead and created a prototype called CRUSTY, which stands for Kilo Power Reactor Using Sterling Technology. And it wasn't all that big. In total, the reactor measured around two meters or six and a half feet tall. Now, I'm no expert at packaging nuclear weapons, sorry, nuclear power into car bodies, but with a bit of elbow grease, you might be able to force that longitudinally under a bonnet, maybe. Sadly, it wasn't that powerful either. Krusty only made one kilowatt of power, which is, well, it's nothing. It's only about 1.3 horsepower. And maybe that's enough to power a satellite in space, but certainly nowhere enough to drive a car but it was an interesting proof of concept. And the beauty is that the power would last for decades. Now at this point, you're probably wondering why not just use solar panels on spacecraft, but solar doesn't really work for deep space exploration away from the sun. So nuclear power in space might have its place. But anyway, I digress. Could it be possible to make a nuclear reactor of a similar size that makes even more power? Well. It might be irrelevant, actually. I'm no nuclear physicist, once again, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say no. Actually, not just no, but no thank you. Because even if you could get a small enough reactor to make big enough power, what about safety? Can you imagine a nuclear reactor on wheels hitting another nuclear reactor on wheels on the road? It would be terrifying. Nuclear power stations need layers upon layers of shielding and a containment structure made of concrete that's several feet thick. And I'm pretty sure that that would have a pretty negative effect on handling. So are there other ways in which nuclear power could help cars? Well, yeah. I did a video recently on synthetic fuels and whether that might be something that can help prolong the life of the internal combustion engine. Long story short, my verdict was no, not as it stands today. And that's because in order to make synthetic fuels, you need a ton of zero emissions energy during the production process. And we don't have enough of that right now. And I'm not sure nuclear can really play a part as it stands. Back in 1996, nuclear power contributed 17.5% of the world's power. So it's never been huge. And it's also on the decline in 2020, that number fell to just 10% of the world's power. As attractive as some people might think it is, it's simply not attractive enough to provide us with our normal day-to-day -day power requirements and certainly not attractive enough to make a bunch of new power stations devoted entirely to synthetic fuels. But here's an interesting one. 
So far, I've talked about how nuclear power could help players in the car industry. What about the other way around? What about how players in the car industry could help nuclear power? Well, check this out. Rolls-Royce this year was backed by private investors and the UK government to develop a new kind of nuclear reactor, small modular reactors. Essentially, these are mini power stations that only occupy about one tenth of the size of a conventional nuclear power plant. So about two football pitches and could generate 470 megawatts of power. That's 470,000 times those little NASA nuclear power things I mentioned earlier, which is enough to provide power for around a million homes. We don't know if these will go ahead as yet, but the aim is to design the systems and technologies to see if it's suitable for deployment in the UK. If this project does work the way that Rolls-Royce intended to, providing millions of homes with extra electricity does make sense. More of us are going electric every day and we need a grid geared towards powering those cars. So maybe nuclear energy will play more of a role in getting your car the energy it needs, certainly in the UK. Obviously, nuclear power has its detractors. Building a nuclear power station takes absolutely ages. EDF Energy put forward a proposal for the Sizewell C nuclear plant back in 2012. And as we head into 2022, construction still hasn't begun. They're also enormously expensive compared to other forms of energy and need 24 seven high level security for obvious reasons, which also isn't cheap. It also leaves behind quite a lot of very dangerous nuclear waste that has to be buried deep underground and guarded for centuries. And people are scared of it because when it goes wrong, it goes very wrong. Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, Fukushima. So not everyone is convinced by nuclear. What's my view? Well, I think nuclear has a very limited role in the automotive world as it stands, at least today. Maybe new small modular reactors will help change that, but time will tell. And the idea of a nuclear powered car is cool on paper, thanks Ford, but it's thoroughly unlikely. And finally, the idea of nuclear contributing to our increasing energy demands is logical, but we've also got a long way before that becomes a reality as well. All right guys, thanks for watching. I hope that you uh, enjoyed this, hope you learned something new. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.